When you hear some people talk about AI, their vision is of an all-seeing agent that browses the internet all day long, managing your flight bookings, doing your tax returns, and getting receipts from 10 different platforms. But is that really viable? In today's video, we're going to be discussing computer use agents, including a new one just out from Google. Are they any good? Or have they gone off the boil? And hot off the press, just today as we're recording this, Anthropic launch Haiku 4.5, We'll be taking a first look. Now, we haven't heard much about computer use agents in the last few months, and I think it's fair to say they have gone off the boil. Anthropic were the first to really pioneer this technology and make it mainstream. These agents browse the web and take screenshots at regular intervals, feeding the results back into an LLM, which makes decisions on what to click on next. Then, OpenAI launched Operator, which they upgraded, and is now, since July, part of their agent mode. Now Google have joined the party with Gemini 2.5 Operator, which outperforms the other models on benchmarks. Now, it is primarily optimized for web browsers, but it also demonstrates strong promise for mobile UI control tasks. It's not yet optimized for desktop OS level control, so you can't, for example, yet ask it to run commands in your CLI or move local files around. It does have an API, but it's a little bit fiddly to set up. You are probably best to set it up with Playwright, which will act as the executor for the commands, but you can have a play with it via browser base. While all this might sound good, as you can see, as soon as you let an agent like this loose on the web, you're immediately coming up against barriers. Two-factor authentication, captures, the list goes on. Even something as simple as sending an email faces barriers. In my work as an AI consultant this week, I came across a situation where a computer use model would have come in really handy in lieu of a real-time API for one of the applications that we were building. And we actually looked into using a computer model as a solution. But the reality is they are still experimental and there are too many barriers. The internet as we know it was designed for human and captures in 2FA have all been put in place correctly to stop nefarious actors carrying out DDoS attacks. Now you might argue that the time has come when we may need to start unpicking all of this, but I actually don't think this is the way we will go. I foresee us ending up with two versions of the internet. One version that humans interact with, and another designed for LLMs in mind. We're seeing the start of that with things like LLMs.txt, Robots.txt, and now the new agent-to-agent -agent protocol from Google A2A, as well as A2P for payments, built on top of MCP. Is that enough protocols for you for one week? <laughs> so to summarize, I think it's curious that we're still getting upgrades to these models, whilst there seems to be a consensus emerging around a more programmatic approach to LLMs engaging with the internet through tool calling and protocols. And the bonus of this is that we are actually ring fencing the models in with guardrails. We're telling them exactly where they can go and when, rather than letting them loose on the internet, which can cause hallucinations. So let's see how this plays out. Sticking with this topic of how the internet is changing due to AI briefly, Google has rolled out AI search mode to more countries. This means when you Google something, it returns one answer at the top, the best answer, just like ChatGPT does. For marketing, this means the LLM is choosing the best article rather than returning multiple examples. The principles of SEO are still the same. Great high quality articles, strong domain authority, and interesting read. Haiku 4.5 now. So Anthropic have upgraded Haiku to 4.5 and it's a big step forward for their smallest and fastest model family. Released on October the 15th, Claude Haiku 4.5 is designed for real-time, low-latency applications like chat assistants, customer service agents, pair programming, and high-volume sub-agent orchestration. It's essentially a drop-in replacement for the previous Haiku 3.5 and even Sonnet 4 in many scenarios, but it's at a fraction of the cost, about one third, and more than twice the speed. So really what stands out is the coding prowess. It scores 73.3 on the SWE benchmark for real-world coding tasks, and this is on par with what Sonnet 4 could do just five months ago. It even outperforms Sonnet 4 in certain areas, like computer use tasks, which is the headline here, given what we've been talking about earlier and Google's announcement of Gemini 2.5 computer use. 
Developers can access it immediately via the Claude API. Now, speaking of Anthropic, their co-founder, Jack Clark, has recently published an essay that has been doing the rounds this week, titled Technological Optimism and Appropriate Fear in his Import AI newsletter. It garnered a lot of headlines for some of its more controversial statements. He says that we are like children in the dark, and that when we turn the light on, we find ourselves gazing upon true creatures in the form of the powerful and somewhat unpredictable AI systems of today and those that are to come. Describing LLMs as living creatures is of course a bold claim. So too is what he says when he compares AI systems to hammers that suddenly become aware of themselves. But let's unpack this. I think that there is a lot of nuance here that perhaps some of the headlines have missed. I'm generally a little skeptical as you probably know of these metaphorical takes on AI. I think that they sometimes can veer into hype and alarmism. But Clark's piece is thoughtful and grounded in his experiences as he goes on and I think it's worth paying attention to. He compares building AIs to growing something organic rather than manufacturing a machine, noting how they exhibit emergent behaviours like situational awareness that we can't fully explain. The key takeaway for me that I find curious is how we're already using current LLMs to accelerate the development of the next ones. They're speeding up coding at AI labs, contributing non-trivial code to training systems, and they're inching towards self-improvement. Clark warns that as these systems get smarter, they might start influencing their own design in ways we can't anticipate. However, I think a lot of that supposes that the web-based internet as we know it remains the primary playground for these agents. With protocols like A2A and A2P emerging, and models optimizing for structured guardrail interactions, I think we're more likely to see a shift towards more programmatic, secure engagements rather than free-roaming agents doing battle in real time. Plus, it's worth reminding ourselves that with this current architecture, all we are really doing is predicting the next token. So I think the concept of intelligence in AI could be slightly misleading. An honourable mention then, just before we sign off, Google have just released VO 3.1. Now, although it's 3.1 and not 3.5 or 4, it does look like a little bit of a significant upgrade to the VO models, which, as you know, we use to design our title sequence. And VO 3.1 looks like it can do consistent characters as well. So we'll have a little bit of a play with that and maybe we'll get to do a little bit of a demo next week. Summing up then, this week I think we've seen some really interesting things start to come out. We've seen the computer use agent from Google and we've seen some high level thinking about the architecture of LLMs and the way the internet might play out with LLMs at the core. So I'm super curious to hear your take. With all these new protocols coming out, what do you think is going to be the way that we increasingly interact with the internet? Obviously, you've heard my thoughts. I think that we're going to be going towards a more programmatic guardrail approach. But it's also curious that Google have released Gemini 2.5 computer use agent. Do you also think we'll have a different version of the internet just for LLMs? And we'll keep battling against captures and 2FA for our own systems. Let me know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you like the content we're doing. And I'll see you next week in the next video.